All right, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our City Zoo build, Tropical Wings Zoo. So we are back in TW Gang and I have got a massive episode for you today. Last episode is linked above though, in case you've missed it, feel free to go and get uh, caught up. Uh, we basically did a bunch of non-animal stuff last time, it was like food huts and that sort of stuff, so feel free to check that one out. But today, we're going to crack on with part one of two parts of our sea lion experience. So basically I put it out on the Discord and on the community page for you to vote on a poll. Four choices, this is the one you pick so let's get into it so we are in the zoo my friends and uh, basically I'm gonna just quickly start by just explaining basically what part one's gonna entail um, I've split it into two because I'm trying to get an episode out every single week at the moment for tropical wing zoo and um, basically I want to put episodes out even if there's stuff where I'm still working on it now to the most part I've got the first bit of the sea lion experience done uh, and that's what we're going to take a look at today there's a bunch of backstage stuff as well there's a rework to the camel habitat and uh you know, there's lots basically for us to get through in today's episode. Um, what I do want to throw out there though, obviously, this is part one of two parts. So this is still very much a work in progress. Um, so please go into it with an open mind. There's going to be bits that are like quite open and not finished. So just respect that next episode when it's all done and dusted, all those little bits will be tied up. But anyway, enough chit chat. Let's take a look at what I've been up to. Um, so we're going to start at the camels. I think it makes sense to kind of start here because I want to kind of explain my thinking behind this and uh, why we've gone down this route, basically. Um, in the middle there, that's just a piece so that the camels don't walk through and escape because they can at the minute because I haven't done the backside of the habitat. But um, essentially, gang, what I've done here is I've finally got to building that raised path that we were going to take over into what was going to be the water world section wasn't it but we're not really doing that anymore um so my ideas for it now were to just take it into a piece of terrain that was higher um elevated basically but because of the lack of space the sea lion experience is actually very close to the back state at the back side of the camel hab and you're actually going to see the way i've had to work all of the backstage areas as well i think it looks really cool to be honest with you um i actually really really like the way it's all come out but it was all relatively tight so I've kind of changed the idea of what this path is now going to kind of represent before it was just going to be you know another way to kind of get over into another part of the zoo but now it's going to kind of serve that purpose but it's all going to also going to serve the purpose of alleviating the traffic to and from the sea lion show obviously these um, you know things they get really really busy in zoos as we all know it's a big ticket thing isn't it that people want to go and see um, so now there's multiple ways that um, our guests can exit and this back uh, pathway to get back into the zoo is kind of like a bit of a quick route basically now um the decoration on the um yeah on on this side of the bridge i'm sure is going to be you know a big topic of conversation amongst you all um i talked to people on the discord about it i looked online i did loads of research and i think eventually i was inspired by um, I believe it was a Chicago Zoo. Don't quote me. It could be a different one. I look at so many pictures and so many references that I lose track. And uh, what they'd done is they had an old kind of like bridge that kind of went over their camel hab. Um, they had the animal house kind of tucked in a bit closer. But on one side of the bridge, they kind of decorated it in that fake wall design uh, type thing. And I quite liked I quite liked it. And then was doing a bit of reading. I was, you know, receiving information from people on Discord about, you know, the camels going off into the kind of like more mountainous parts you know deeper into the evening and whatnot and I felt feel really felt like it made um, sense to kind of decorate the um, the client facing the guest facing part basically um, of the bridge so that is exactly what I've done um, I really really like it I tried multiple different designs I tried a brick design I tried it all in concrete and this is the design to be honest with you I like the most um it is a bit more natural looking. It kind of suggests that the budget of the zoo would be very healthy as well, because if they've got the money to kind of invest to build, you know, things like this, it, you know, suggests that it is a more up and coming zoo. And our whole thing with this zoo was that it was a brand new zoo that was being put inside a city and, you know, billions and billions of pounds were going to be pumped into it, um, you know, basically to, 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 to bring it to life, essentially, you know, millions, I should say billions. What am I on about? Um, to basically like bring it to life and essentially, you know, this was like part two of getting 
getting the camel hab to exactly how the zoo kind of wanted it. So if I just take you over so you can take a bit of a better look, you're going to see the, you know, the old part of the kind of bridge is exposed. I didn't want to cover all that up as well. I quite like the fact that you've got the two things, um, you know, showing through. I do still need to do a little bit of work on this, to be honest with you. I think some some twigs and some plants kind of like growing off of it would be quite nice. I've actually done it towards the backstage uh, area. But I kind of want to get a bit of that going on in the main hab. They can use that tunnel. We are going to build um, a smaller uh, section uh, that's like an addition to this on the other side. Um, I just haven't got around to doing that. I literally I'm having to work on so many different areas all at the same time because of the you know the way that the zoo flows now. Um, so yeah, it's been a little confusing, but I really really like the way this has all come together. As you can see, we've had to kind of rework all of this kind of back area as well, putting some plants and whatnot in here and we will take a uh, you know a deeper dive at all that as well uh, so if I bring you over this way you will see that it goes all the way up to at the back there and that's basically where our sea lion experience um, is now when you get to the back there's a splinter off this way and a splinter off that way that way is going to go to the basically the the back side of the main kind of hab for the sea lions and then going this way it's going to basically take you into the show area or you can take the stairs down and then in off to the cranes and uh the victorian gardens and that sort of stuff and um, what i really like the most about uh about this though is that if you flip it around it kind of uh, comes off right at this lovely little seated area with the little food station i think that's uh you know, I think this ends up having a really, really lovely kind of um, bit of placement, to be honest with you. Absolutely loving the way uh, that's done. Now, you're going to see the back side of the bridge isn't done, but the front side is. I was kind of like working on that side because that's the bit I've been working on the most. But we are probably going to do a similar design on the back, but um, I don't think all of it will be in that design because I'm doing a smaller part. It's not going to be the same size, basically. It's probably going to be half the size. We're probably going to go from about here... Uh, up this way and round here and I kind of want to have a little water area um, in here as well and I might kind of raise the back up a little bit so it's slightly higher basically um, because I really want to kind of carry on experimenting with um, you know the terrain and raising and lowering and whatnot um, but we do have to think about our backstage coming kind of this way as well. So there's just lots of little calculations you have to make when you're doing all these things. But yeah, that's the first uh, that's the first part basically of today's episode. Now the second part is kind of like I want to show you the backstage stuff, but you're going to get a sneaky peek at the sea lion experience as a result of me doing the backstage next. But I kind of want to explain my thinking behind all of the backstage and the reason why I've had to kind of build it this way. Now. We are very, very tight on space, okay? So that is one of the big issues that we've got, basically, in this part of the zoo, is that, you know, the sea lion experience is going to go right flush, probably, all the way to that fence, to be honest with you. That's where the main path is going to go for the backside of the hab and where the main swim area is for the animals. So um, that's where that path's going to go. But this is really, really tight in it. And so I've had to kind of back... Um, I've had to back all of this in and then I had to try and figure out how I was going to do all of the backstage basically for the camels but as you can see it has fit in here snug as a bug hasn't it it really really has it looks immense the way it's all kind of like all tucked in there together now my big thing was because I had these major kind of big access areas I, I wanted to be sure that we could still continue up this way and take it deeper into the zoo I didn't just want it to stop here because it really would have made sense to have big access gates like that um, if you couldn't take it further in now the big problem we've got is that this is actually pretty low clearance um, for the bridge I think I kind of measured it out and I think it was about um, three meters so that's still about 10 foot isn't it so it's still pretty big but you're not going to be able to get certain vehicles through there so obviously the zoo is going to have to think about this sort of stuff um, about getting the vehicles through but there is still this ability because of the way we've done this raised platform now uh, and essentially this is where the terrain changes and that's kind of like where it joins on this was initially going to join up to like the reptile house was going to be here basically but obviously plans change and this is kind of um you know this is how i'm doing it now so if we just take a, a deeper look at the backstage you can see we just stuck this little bit in the back for our camels we've got the access in case the animals need, and ever need to be kind of like separated or removed 
removed um, from the habitat. Um, we've finished off all of the kind of fencing. I've put this little um, this little um, structure in here as well. Things can be stored uh, underneath. I started adding in all of the little sheds, workers sheds and all that sort of stuff, getting some planting in here. Um, I really didn't want this to just be a bunch of concrete in here. So I've tried to add plants where possible and it's one of the reasons why I left this little section over here a little bit emptier so we could add some plants in there um, to provide a bit of shade and that as well and then um, if we were to just flip around this way you're going to see that this uh, wall here is very much kind of like exposed and that's to the um, the sea lion experience basically now this part of the sea lion experience that I'm going to show you in a second is basically the show area this is where the zoo holds all of its kind of like sea lion experiences where all the shows and that take place where they educate the guests um, on the animals and then there is going to be another part which I'll talk about a bit more but because of the way I've decorated and whatnot the wall is kind of like all exposed here but I actually think that it really just provides such a unique backstage area having all these different materials we've got the concrete you know the woods we've got um, all this um, brick wall here I've even run the concrete along there to make sure the walls don't get damaged um, raised it up slightly to make walkways across for you know our our um, zookeepers and whatnot I am still working on this I've still got like um, all of the curbs and whatnot to get in but it's all stuff that takes time gang it's all so many little intricate pieces um, if we take you up this way you will see that obviously this is that low bridge I wanted to really kind of like I wanted to um, make that apparent as well to us because I am eventually going to make this zoo available in the workshop and whatnot. So I wanted to make uh, you know it realistic and apparent. So we've got this like little low bridge kind of sign at the top there. Um, you know, a walkable path this way, walkable path this way, and then something else that I thought would be really interesting. And I've seen people, I've seen this done before, is that we've made this little kind of storage um, area inside kind of like the bridges structure basically um so we just stuck this door on here and uh you would go inside and there would be storage basically in there once uh once all of the bridge is done and it's all on added some lighting and whatnot and then there was this little section here um i've kind of just gone with this kind of like chain link to kind of like disguise um you know the areas and just in case animal did get out then you know it'd be they wouldn't be able to get through they'd kind of you know be stuck in this area essentially um and then i was left with this little area and i just thought this would be such a unkept area that i've decided to just fill it with you know brambles and nettles and you know basically weeds and you know bushes and just let it go a little out of control basically through a few trees in as well because we're trying to disguise our backstage areas to our guests um i'll show you all this from kind of like a guest perspective in a moment as well and i will take you up there and show you what it looks like um for the guests into the camel habs before we do the sea line experience and then as you can see we've come over here and uh, we've carried on you know adding all of this foliage in and whatnot this is what i was talking about adding you know foliage to the rocks look at what a lovely contrast you get when it starts to climb up the rocks and whatnot i really really love that and i think if we can add a bit of that uh, on these rocks it will look amazing i really really think it'll add something uh, to the habitat and it's just been allowed to just go a little wild and it's nice as well to get all of this tied up back here really really loving this um gone with a different design as well for the for the fence back here it didn't need to be anything like too over the top camels needs are pretty simple you know very much domesticated animal so you know it's really really easy to kind of care for them so we just carried on that um, that design that we had. But yeah, I, I think this is by far probably one of my favourite backstage areas. I really, really do think that. I think one of the things I love about it as well is that the road area is just really irregular. The shape of it and whatnot. The road markings obviously still need finishing, but I think they'll really make it look uh, amazing. They'll really bring it together as well when they're all finished. But um, I absolutely love this little backstage area. Now, before we do the sea line experience, let me just show you what we've got from a guest perspective so that's the bottom there and then you will come around this way and this will take you into the sea line experience as you go there and then we're going to have a piece that's going to splinter off this way as well and that's going to kind of go to the back part of you know the back end of the main part of the sea lines essentially um we've got to just work out gates and whatnot coming underneath this path how we're going to work this out or are we going to take this down here now wall this off and then have a gate 
and a, and, a, and another gate over it. I'm really not sure. Just they're little things I need to work out. So I guess would be able to actually see this area, which um, to be honest with you, I don't think it's that big a deal. I recently went to Colchester Zoo and um, I forgot that you can actually see all of the behind the scenes stalls for the zebras and the giraffe and the, and all of the other animals, the ostriches and all that stuff that you can actually see in over into it. Um, see, um, when we went there, it was terrible to be honest with you because they were cleaning out and all that ammonia and poop smell was not nice, but you could see them actually working away, cleaning out, uh, you know, where all the animals were kept. It was amazing. I took loads of uh, photos because it's going to help massively for me building realistic, um, you know, backstage stuff. So it isn't actually that big a deal to be able to see some backstage and they will be able to see this a little bit because they can see over uh this wall basically but i did just try to disguise some of it like i felt like all of this here this was a good placement you know for a few trees in here to kind of disguise all this um the plant in here is quite strategic as well because it kind of disguises what you're kind of walking towards um that way what a view this is by the way with the skyline in the background that is pretty sweet i hadn't seen that before and then if you come up this way there's a couple of little openings basically these are these rocks are high enough that they kind of block the view but there's a couple of little openings so that the guests can look out um, into the hab and they can see the camels basically and i think it's actually a really really different and cool perspective of the camel hab and again what a screenshot that is with the uh, skyline off in the background. Um, and um, yeah, we're going to be working off that way. The, the zoo is really, really starting to come together now. It really, really is. Now, what I'm going to do for the sea lion experience is I'm going to take you around this way because this is going to be basically kind of like the way in. Now, this is where it gets a bit bitty. Like a lot of the areas you've looked at, they're relatively finished. There's just a few little details here and there that need adding, you know, the odd plant, the odd road marking. But um, this is very much unfinished, especially kind of like the entrance into it. The actual the actual show area itself is pretty much done. It just needs the final little touches, the little details that bring it to life. And uh, I always do all of my detailing last. I always do it at the very, very end because I'd like to do it all together to make sure that, um, you know, I get all of the bits done. So you've obviously got your cranes here. I'd put these planters in, didn't I? Because this was going to be our separator because we are going to use a different color floor basically for this. But you'll turn this corner. I do plan on putting like a sign here for like, um, a sea lion experience every day at such and such a time um, and that sort of stuff and some direction signs towards it and then I've changed up the materials here you know bring in some woods in bring in some stones in bring in some fake rocks in I really just wanted to bring this area to life now what I'm going to say is there's no sea lions in the hab right now because they can escape um, because there's little areas that aren't blocked off but for the cinematics at the end there will be sea lions in there so you can see them moving around in all their glory um, so yeah this is kind of like why all of this pathway was put in here for a reason I am going to in the what's happening next going to talk you through how the next episode is going to work and how this is going to be finished off um so that'll be interesting because you'll get to basically see what i'm going for but let me give you a little zoom out so you can see exactly what i have done so i'll give you this look first and then i'll give you it from another angle as well so this is the sea lion experience area and considering i hate working with water in this game i just find it a real pain i really really am so proud of this one because um i have had to learn new techniques and i basically got this exactly how i wanted it and that's saying something i rarely rarely ever get it exactly how i want it but i have nailed this i've got it exactly how i want it's such a nice blend of a nautical theme without it being over the top um it's that realism it just it really does feel so real like i really honestly believe that you know if you were to jump in this zoo you would think you were going to go and see the sea lions there's a few little bits that are going to be difficult for me to kind of block areas off and whatnot but um but we'll get there i think i'll 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 find some workarounds basically to um to get to get around it but 
this is my sea lion experience area now there's the planting still needs to be finished um, and the reason for that is those like conifer trees it's really hard to find stuff that goes with them um to be honest with you because i feel like when you use them because they're quite a smart tree you need your foliage to be really smart rather than the wild foliage that i am known for basically <laughs> but um anyway let me talk you through the whole lot um, i really really want you to kind of understand everything about this so this here is actually a little push chair uh, stroller buggy kind of parking spot basically you wouldn't be able to take them all the way in there's just such limited space um, you know for the people going in there to watch the show we needed a little area so you can park your buggies and your strollers in here and then pick them up when the show is finished now there are multiple ways to, for the guests to move around in here um, to get to places now there's staircases from the very bottom here you can take this staircase and then go to this staircase to get to the second level and then you can take this staircase and then there's another staircase at the back and that's what takes you to that pathway basically at the back i will show you all of that so you know how it works now the big thing about this is it's functional it all works okay that's the most important thing about any of my builds is making sure that it works okay so this this actually these steps actually go up they go here they actually go up and they go there um the only bit that isn't functional is the top area okay you can't sit there that's just dressed up but at the bottom our guests can sit there okay so i managed to make that work but to get that second level to work i had to then run another piece of path and then sit them on it but be it was so difficult to get the angle correct so that the seating would actually sit underneath the dressed up staircase basically it was just too fiddly so i gave up so you can sit at the bottom but you can't really sit at the top it's just one of those things though um so yeah so you can go up this way as you can see there's another like little staircase um that takes you up here um and then this is kind of like the little walk area um, your stairs your seat in um, so yeah there's multiple ways and then this is the other staircase um, at the back basically and this is take this is what takes you to the bridge area that pathway that raised path basically and it takes you out there um, so we just planted up back here because i wanted to kind of disguise uh, the backstage uh, as much as possible but like make it pretty as well we've kind of got this sign here this is going to have like a direction so arrows to, to take you places rather than put one of those main kind of wayfinders i just felt like one little thing like this would be great because it's just at the back of the um it's just at the back of the the sea line experience anyway basically so that's kind of like my thinking behind that um and then yeah i'll take you back down but that's basically how all the stairs work and they are functional like i say now if we go through this way this takes you into the kind of main kind of stage area this is where our sea lions obviously would perform in a real world obviously we know we don't really we don't have shows in planet zoo but essentially this is where um you know they would perform but uh, like i've already said the guests will be able to sit um you know in here um and uh, we will be having animal talks basically now there is a pathway uh, a slim pathway that goes up here um and then it comes around and then eventually i'm gonna leave it about there and i want to try and do that animal talk trick so you can sink a piece of path so that'll be down but our keeper will actually be stood up here doing the talks um because i think it would be cool to have a zoo the uh, animal talk person up here while the sea lions are kind of like swimming around and people are sat here taking it in i think it'd be pretty sick well hopefully hopefully we can make it work um but um that's basically what we're going to do that path is there already it goes to about here at the minute but you know it does go it can go there basically because of the way i've kind of worked all this there's so much to take in with this build it's really it's it's quite a difficult one to kind of show you to be honest with you because there is so so much um you know for for you to take in but obviously this is the housing building um there's you know the inside i've really had to interpret i'll show you in a minute but there isn't a lot online for uh, sea lion kind of backstage stuff like there really isn't um there's so much stuff for like actual habitats but the the, but the husbandry stuff behind the scenes is really hard to get hold of so I've, I've i've done my best with the pictures and stuff that i had but um let's take a look at the seating area first 
So I tried a few different designs with this, to be honest with you, um, and I really, this is the one I'm happy with the most. I really, really am happy with this. Um, and essentially, it kind of covers the whole back and then, you know, up until kind of like a little bit at the front. But with it being in the UK, we don't have amazing weather all the time. So I wanted us to have the ability to kind of like, you know, shade the guests um on those days that are not as nice basically if it's potentially raining and that sort of stuff i wanted there to be some shelter for the guests but then also leave some open for you know the the amazing days the sunshine when it would be amazing to sit there and watch the sea lion show like that so um i've really tried to give a mix so kind of covering the back and then up up until the front a little bit it is kind of like banked a little as you can see, it is banked a little because I wanted to. I wasn't really wanted to get that, but as you as you can see, it's pretty low at the back. Um, it's I, I I really like the scale. I feel like the scale is pretty much there. Maybe some might think it's on the large side, but I think it's pretty much there. And again, like the roof was a real pain. You're going to see these angles here. It's not. It's not great. There is some weird shapes going on, but I put some glass in as well because it was really, really dark and I just wanted to bring some light to it. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. But yeah, that's basically the seating area. As you can see, kind of like continue this kind of uh, stone design all the way around. I have started putting some wood in on the tops as well in certain areas. I'm not going to put it on all of it, but I think some of the low areas, I think it, it adds something. So I think it might be quite nice. So maybe these these lower areas is where um, I might might do it and then um, and then stop basically um, I might, might not do it up the top and that but we'll see we'll see um, how much time that's going to take to be honest with you and then we'll look at the main part which really is the pool and the behind the scenes and probably the bit you're all really interested in now there's actually three little pools where this is concerned you've got the main large pool there's a small backstage pool because um, from what I was reading they always like to have a secondary backstage pool um, you know in case they need to separate animals and there's also a pool inside which is something that um, is done regularly as well the way the access points are done inside, obviously I've interpreted them a little bit, but I did find some interesting plans and I, I kind of worked it from that. So, um, you know, I'm hoping it's as realistic as I could get it. Um, this building, I'm going to throw it out there now, is like literally so custom, it's untrue. All of the roof trims are custom, all of the roof tiles, the wooden roof is all custom. All of the, literally all the struts, everything about it, the windows, the lot, it's all custom. And it had to be because it was, there was just, when I was using the pieces in the game, it was so big and I needed to bring the scale down a bit. My only issue is with Planet Zoo is that some pieces are just so large. The scale for them, you know, is, is a lot bigger than it really needs to be. But um, yeah, if we were to sit here, um, you know, at the step and we take a look at the hab, basically this is it. You've got your three doors for your animals to come in to enter the show. Um, little parts they can stand up on and then they can swim in the water. Now, the water is uh, just about three and a half meters, I believe, um, is, is how I measured it. So they should be able to dive because I know three meters is, uh, is the limit for the sea lions. If uh, if need be though, the ground can go down more. Uh, I think I dug out four meters just in case, um, but I did it to three and a half meters for the swimming area. Now, what I will say is you can see this kind of like design here at the minute. Now, um, the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking that this ledge, I might continue this design over the ledge and we'll just leave this side. Um, as the concrete and the bottom like this um, because this little ledge does look a bit irregular when you're kind of looking in there like that with that design there so I'm thinking of just doing that little change but um, that will be the only the only part that I do change to be honest if, you, if I do anything but as you can see it's a lot deeper um, the pole is a lot deeper um, than you know you can actually see um, uh, from the sort of guest area basically um, so uh, yeah to keep that in mind um, and then, um, right, we've got multiple access ways for our zookeepers. They don't actually use this one. This is obviously, it's just, you know, to look good. It's for realism at the end of the day. Our zookeepers will probably end up, like, entering back here somewhere. Um, you know, we've got to have, we're going to have um, a little small kind of area back here and then in here because I'm, obviously I'll explain all this in the what's happening next, but there are going to be other buildings and whatnot added. So, um so um 
yeah, we've just got these little walkways because, like, obviously you do stuff for aesthetical purposes as well. So this is like a, an entry point for our zookeepers as they come up and around this way. They have got a gate so they can go out the back there. This is kind of like the area that they would stand on with the sea lions and whatnot when they're doing the shows. And that is the view of your patrons and your guests that you get, basically. And that is some view, if you ask me. I think... It really looks real. I think that's what it is. I, I, I've i loved building this. I really, really have loved building this. I hate working with water in this game, but this has been a pleasure to build. I, I actually can't wait to finish it now. I can't wait to like crack on and get um, you know working on it a bit more. But yeah, I really, really think that that's a, that's a quality, quality look, isn't it? As you can see, there are some exit points. Um, you know, so you can walk up and out quick, basically. They obviously don't actually join up. It's just, again, just to, just to look uh, good. But, you know, that path does work that way and they can go out that way. So um, it sort of, it will sort of look like they do anyway. And then um, what we'll do is I will show you the um, building first, the indoor of the, and, and the inside of the building. So um, as you can see, it's really intricate, this build. Now, I've done this because I want to represent an upstairs, but there isn't an upstairs, okay? The downstairs is all dressed because it needs to be, but I haven't bothered doing the upstairs, but I kind of just wanted it to look and be represented that actually there are areas up there that our staff can get to, basically. So um, we've done a little door at the top, and then I've done this little ramp that goes up. And again, I think it's quite nautical, and it? It, it looks right. It looks like it, it kind of belongs there. So um, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of add a little detail like that, because otherwise it just would have been strange having all of that building at the top, um, to be honest with you. But yeah, that's kind of like the building. That's all the shape. That's kind of how it's looking. I had to kind of add these little bits, these little details. I'm not I'm not that keen on them, but because of the way the windows are so low and the way this uh, roof slanted, they kind of clipped into the windows and it didn't look right. So um, yeah, I had to just create these little spots basically uh, at the top. It's not um, a big you know, problem, but it's just one of those. And then again... These roof trims are custom as. I had to use all the metal pieces, basically, to make these work and to make these a thing. But, oh my God, don't they look good. And that roof design, using all those wooden pieces and uh, just wooden lattices and that, just, I really do think that if you can do it and you're creative enough, make your own roofs because uh, the sky's the limit if you can do that. Right, let's head on inside the building first, and then I'll show you the little behind the scenes part. So this is like one of the doors in, and you're kind of greeted with this little kind of area, basically, here. Um, this here is animal, this is animal, this is a little storage room. And I am actually gonna fill this room with a bunch of stuff as well, because um, as you can see, you can see through the window. So I am actually gonna decorate this room out with a bunch of stuff. I wanna put like boys in here. I wanna put like old crates. I wanna put stuff like extra balls and toys and things like that basically that the um, that the keepers might use like for the shows and stuff. So I wanna pack that building out. Now I need to put the doors on here. Um, I haven't done that yet, um, but I do need to do that. I'm probably gonna put the door on this one and close it and then I might, leave this one open so that the sea lines can go in and out now what i will say is these doorways are probably a bit small but i'm hoping that they're going to update the small hitbox mod eventually because um when i was creating them a bigger size it just looked awful they the animals can fit through these doors so i'm just hoping that um you know, eventually that, that hitbox mod gets updated for us um but uh yeah so basically this is that where all the doorways are to go out onto the hab. So this goes out onto the show. This would go to backstage and then into the main, um, into their main habitat. And the same can be said for this. This goes into a small backstage area and then out onto the main habitat. I'll show you that bit in a moment. Um, and then we've got these three little section. We've got these two that are like partitioned off basically. Um, I see um, something where like they partitioned them and then the animals can be like locked 
in an area like this so that they can be inspected a bit easier, like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but because of the sea lions in zoos, a lot of them are kind of like trained. They, they go through a lot of enrichment training, so they're really easy to kind of handle anyway. So that's why these backstage areas, they can be pretty like open and whatnot for the sea lions from what I was reading. Um, so yeah, I might change the light design in here as well. I'm not 100% on it, but we will we'll see. Um, and then, yeah, so basically the reason I've done this is so that you can separate animals in this room, basically. So that's why we're going to have a doorway on there so that the animals can be separated. And then this area here, this is like just for our staff. So that's why we're going to put a little door on there. Uh, um, and then if you come into this area, this is their indoor pool that I was talking about, which is like a really regular thing. So it's just a really basic, like it's not big, but it's just a little basic kind of like indoor pool. Um, as you can see, just some lights, a little bit of um, you know irrigation and whatnot, a couple of windows there. Again, this could be another like little training area, um, you know, with the animals, um, you know, that uh, would be used quite regularly. Um, and then if we were to go out this way, and this is like sea lion. Uh, exit point obviously this takes you out to another little backstage area and a slightly bigger pool um but this is another area where the sea lions could be kind of like um locked away uh, essentially what we're gonna do is have kind of like um just they would just put like a little fence in here i'm gonna put like a little clip there and a little clip there and they would just kind of like clip basically a little fence in if they ever needed to and then that gate there is going to be the gate that goes out onto the main hab again. So there's going to be two entry exit points for our sea lands over onto the main hab. Um, I've closed, closed the gate on this one um, because obviously I want this one to maybe just look as though that's what they're going to do. And then the main entry point <coughs> will be um, back here, basically. And um, it will be a little bit more obvious, basically is all I'm going to say, and I'll explain all when we get to it. But um, what I've done with this as well is I did like a little design, little mosaic design on the bottom of it. Honestly, it, it took longer than it really needed to. It's so unnecessary because no one's going to see it, but I just wanted to dress it up a little bit. I just wanted to make this area look pretty cool. And um, I think it does, doesn't it? I think that does look pretty cool. Come on. You can't say it, don't. And um, yeah, and then we flip this around and this is like another, like I was saying, this is going to be our keeper talk entry exit um, pathway here. But this would also be like another zookeeper entry exit. Um, and again, I'm probably just going to put like another little rope uh, stopper there, maybe, because I'm going to build this wall out. Um, and probably some more rocks like this and that, and then build it all out with the planting. So like the guests wouldn't be able to get through there anyway. So that's kind of like the plan. And I don't really know if there's anything more to show you. I just feel like it's such a build. It's such a big build. It was such a hard build that I feel like I want to show you so, so much more. But until it's really finished, you, there's not really much more I can show you. It just, I really hope you like it, gang. I really, really hope you like it as much as I do. Because I love it. I think it looks immense. The the rocks work that I've gone through to get all that. It just... I don't think I could do much better. And I think that says something about a build when you're doing it. Okay, my friends. So we're going to move on to the what's happening next part of today's episode. And essentially what's happening next is we're going to finish the sea lion experience. But I kind of want to talk to you about how it's going to play out basically and now we're going to get it finished um because this bit was difficult i actually think this was the hardest bit i think this was this was the the more technical bit this was the much harder bit i think the second bit will uh, kind of work itself out um i really really do um because the next bit is just really about mapping the edge of the habitat getting the um, pathways in for our guests um, getting a viewing window in and um, and then just filling it with water basically and decorating it I, d I don't really see it being half as difficult as this bit this was all the buildings this was the viewing area this was there was so much to this there really really was and then the rework of the camels on top because I kind of had to do that to make sure this area was finished so Essentially, I'm just going to explain to you about like where it's going to work, how it's going to work, and kind of where the, the hab's going to be. So this obviously is just the show area. Um, we will I will leave access to this for some of the sea lions because I think it would be cool just to see them swimming around in there. Um, but 
essentially what's going to happen is we've got a piece of wall here and I'm going to be bringing this wall down this way and then I'm going to bring it off at an angle this way and then in here and I think about here is where I'm going to be putting a viewing window. I think about there, maybe a little further back. I'm really, really not sure at the minute until I start kind of like working the, the outline, I won't know. But about there, I'm going to do a viewing window. We're actually going to drop the terrain slightly, go down some steps into it because I want the water to be really deep um, in the... Um, in this window, I want, to, I want you to have a really good look view into the kind of deep water of the hap. And I'm hoping to do it in kind of like a, a circular kind of semicircle design with the window at the back, basically. And then the main path, the main walkable path, is obviously we'll come out of that and then we'll come this way. Um, and we'll come around and the main walkable path is going to be right along the wall, basically. And we're probably going to like snake it all the way round and then kind of like to the back of the hab basically okay that's kind of how it's going to work and that that pathway is going to be high it's going to be at this height essentially um we're going to have to work our way up onto that and then it's going to be quite high because it's going to give us that nice terrain um height and that we wanted um and i want obviously it to be high enough so that you can see into the sea lion's hab but it's basically going to snake all the way kind of like along there uh, at the back. So then this area in here is where the main kind of swimmable area is going to be. And it's going to obviously, because we're doing the viewing window here, it's going to kind of work its way around, uh, around this way and then around kind of like towards the back there and it's going to finish and then we're going to come around. It's going to be quite a large area it's going to be quite a big swimmable area for our sea lions and the reason i'm doing that is because we're going to have a few we're going to have quite a few at any one time there could be three sea lions like in the show but i would quite like to have quite a few like six or seven sea lions you know i was looking at a few um you know like i basically my biggest references for this habitat were um sea lion sound and sea lion landing which are like two of the best uh, notably two of the best sea lion experiences you can go to in zoos i think one's in illinois um i can't remember where the other one is um but yeah they're like amazing that's basically what this is kind of like um you my reference points and um in one of those they've got like 10 sea lions like it's massive the amount of sea lions they've got um but they've got this huge area and so i want to kind of replicate that i i want to I want to kind of go quite big on this. I don't just want a few sea lions. Um, I feel like this is going to be one of the big things you go to this zoo for. So I want to have quite a few of them. So I want to make quite a big swimmable area, basically. And then on top of all of this kind of swimmable area, we've got our guest kind of like path going this way uh, off to the back there. Um, what I do want to do is um, I want to add a second um uh housing unit like this but obviously not this detail because this is just like guest facing but you know this kind of design like but i want to add another like housing unit like in here essentially what that's going to have is like another area where our sea lions can go in another like little pool that they can go in uh, and a few like little stalls for them to like rest in, inside and whatnot and then um i also want to have the food preparation and the staff room as part of that build basically that's what i want to do um with that and then um and then um just off uh, this way maybe at like this angle uh in here because this path is going to kind of come down it's going to work its way down um you know to to the to to this level basically um then i want to have like the uh life support there essentially um I'm probably just going to do the building and not worry about the internal parts of it, like all of the tanks and whatnot, because like I've said, I'm trying to save on pieces and the bits we're not going to see. Um, there's no point adding it, but essentially there'll be a building there that's like for life support because it needs to kind of be there. Then we can fill in all the planting because that'll be important back here. We can fill in all that backstage and then we'll know what we're working with. And I think the way that the backstage area is going to work for this is this path's going to come down and it's going to, it's going to end up being at the same kind of like level um as this right we're probably what we're going to do is have another like access gate um going across the um the walkable path and then there'll be another gate the other side and on the other side of that gate will be kind of like this road it will be like some parking basically is what i'm thinking and then like a, like a little building there uh, and that will kind of be like the access for the sea lions like from the proper backstage area uh, and in um because 
I can't see another way of getting vehicles in. I don't want to do another tunnel, basically. So if we can just take vehicles across like a little bit of pathway, I think that makes more sense than... Um, you know, building another tunnel and then it just getting really complicated. So we'll just bring our road this way and then the access point will be through a couple of gates. But because we'll do all that nice planting and whatnot, it'll be really disguised and I think it will look uh, really, really lovely. Um, but yeah, essentially, that's what I'm going to be working towards next episode. Um, you know, I really want to get it finished for next episode as well. So um, I'm hoping it just really comes together nice. But like this is this is what we've got so far um this is our sea line experience i think overhead it looks really really good i really like it nice bit of color um you know it really looks different from the rest of the zoo as well um and yeah i'm buzzing i absolutely love this and so there you have it my friends we are done and dusted for another episode of tropical wings zoo a big one a very first as well for me using the water the way i have uh, enjoy the cinematics my friends like i said i've added a few sea lions to swim about for you in the cinematics but couldn't have them during the episode because of them being able to escape and whatnot but uh yeah i do hope you've enjoyed it um hopefully for next episode i will have this done finished all the planting all of the decoration all the rock work all of the additional buildings it will be finished and then we will have sea lions we'll have an amazing show and then what i'm actually going to do after that's happened is officially open the zoo so the episode after sea lion experience is done it will be another cinematic episode like we did a little while ago um, but it will be the official opening and unveiling of this zoo so um, do look forward to that my friends but if you're new around here consider hitting the subscribe button it's very much appreciated by me and the best way to support the channel drop a like on this video if you've enjoyed it um, that's the best way to support the series but until the next one my friends stay safe stay humble and i will see you real real soon